I'll be having that. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> little throwback, little callback. That's what we call that in the biz. World's Funniest Confessions. I haven't done one of these in a while, so let's see what kind of deep dark secrets the internet is harboring. My girlfriend thought I had my pics and internet porn stars in my, my eyes only. I showed it to her and she found out that it is just hundreds of pictures of traffic. I'm obsessed with checking traffic all over my state. I-19M am obsessed with traffic. <laughs> Did that little exclamation mark there? I am obsessed with traffic. <laughs> my girlfriend 19F found out about this where uh, we were going through pictures on my phone. We got to my eyes only and I was weird around it since it's full of my traffic screenshots, including traffic cameras via OGO, traffic on Google Maps, and even screenshots of the highway signs saying how bad the traffic is. <laughs> what is OGO? Real time Ohio traffic. All right, fuck yeah. Things are looking pretty good. That's good. Good to see the roads are nice and clear in Ohio right now at 7.16 a.m. California time, of course. All clear. Ohio residents, you guys are good right now. I'd get out there and get to work, you know? She asked me if I downloaded pics from the internet or had my dick pics saved there, and I told her no. She reassured me that it's okay and that every guy screenshots porn stars, and she knows that I really love her, and she is just curious about what porn stars I find hot, lol. I don't think anyone screenshots porn stars. You know videos exist, right? You can just watch videos. I don't think it, what is this, fucking 1995? People just have still shots of their favorite porn stars saved. Well, I open it for her. Her face was very confused. A few hundred screenshots of traffic. I hid it in there so no one can find it when I'm showing people my camera roll. I confessed my obsession with traffic with her. And she was really sweet and loving about it. She also apologized for thinking I had porn in there since I've been animate to her that I don't like to watch it. We had a good laugh. I told her to promise to keep it a secret from my other friends until I tell them and she did promise here's the thing though i do jerk off to the traffic pictures <laughs> kidding it doesn't say that it might as well though because this is fucking weird i feel like we haven't yet reflected on how weird this is what is it about like why would you need to it's kind of the same thing as screenshotting a porn star like why would a screenshot of traffic in that moment interest you later like are you going back and checking the times and being like oh well fucking last week on thursday at 7 30 a.m it was bad so this today is probably gonna be pretty bad i'll just like go back and make sure like verify that that's the case oh my god dude november 29th will go down as a historic day in traffic history i got that bad boy sc screenshot right here you will not believe the red lines on this screenshot okay look at this yeah bumper to bumper my guy here's the thing i also have a folder on my computer full of traffic screenshots that she does not know about she's gonna be pissed when she finds out about that <laughs> i thought you were done with the traffic shit i can't i can't stop i live in cincy but take screenshots of the main five cities in ohio when there's an eventful traffic day it adds up to about 10 to 20 per week i know what highways get backed up at what times i wake up at 8 a.m every day to check the morning rush on my ipad i watch and refresh cams and google maps looking for any traffic shenanigans it's funny he's like a surf checking the conditions in the morning but he, he's an urban surfer i would call this he's an urban surfer checking the tides checking the waves checking the winds after that i go back to bed for a few hours before i have to feed my cat and put in a few hours of work i do my work very well and don't let the traffic checking get in the way of it <laughs> he's really talking about this like it's an addiction i can quit whenever i want okay i don't let this shit get in the way of what i gotta do in my life so it's not an addiction i can quit whenever i want i can quit easily i can quit today if i wanted to i'm just gonna like check out one more time this is like this is insane because it's it is like almost rush hour so i gotta probably check one more time but after that i'm done i take a break from 4 to 5 30 to check the evening rush hour as long as there are no strict deadlines i will sometimes also check out local traffic twitter accounts to get the latest traffic news from the professionals this does get a bit tricky when i don't have to do any work on weekdays i will spend that time with friends usually and well i am kind of sneaky with my phone to check the traffic every hour or so at rush hour taking screenshots as needed of course i pretend like i'm on reddit or instagram sometimes i even have pre-planned funny posts to pull up in a case of emergency this is an addiction this is exactly what people do when they're addicted to something. I do plan to tell my other friends, I don't really think this is much of a problem, just something different that not many people do. I think of it like checking the weather. Wow, the wet, the weather, the weather. This, this is the kind of weird shit I was hoping for when I joined this sub. I read this and I said, oh yeah, this is the stuff. Like I was OP looking at the traffic jam on the 50. Yeah, man, that's so true. This is perfect. It's the perfect, I don't know if this is fake or not, if it's, it's fake, excellent, excellent job. This is the type of shit that this fucking subreddit is about. Truly. I love that he never says why. He just says it's an obsession. Which again, is an addiction thing. It's like, I don't know why. I just, I don't, it makes me, f I, 
it makes my life worse. I don't know why I keep doing it. You think I want to be fucking cranking off to Google Maps in the bathroom while my friends are fucking drinking beers? No, okay? I don't want to be in the bathroom fucking, oh, it's a bottleneck. Oh, there's a big bottleneck today. Oh, fucking four lanes are closed. Holy sh fucking shit. Oh, you can barely get through this one car. Oh my God, it's five lanes down to one. Oh, I'm about to bust. Oh, that's fantastic. That is fantastic. I love that. That's my favorite post I've ever seen. I accidentally tricked my neighbor into thinking I was depressed when in reality I was getting off to people crying. What? I have this fetish for people crying. Recently, I've been delving more into that side of myself, trying to really see what gets me off. <laughs> That's a weird way of saying that you're just getting desensitized. It's been really exploring the depths of my fetishes. That all culminated in me just watching videos of people crying. Nothing inherently sexual was going on in those videos and wanking off to that. Since I live alone in my apartment and worked at home, I used the TV in my living room. Unfortunately, I underestimated how thin the walls were. I was about to head out to go get some coffee with friends, but saw that someone had left a basket of snacks and chocolate on my door. I thought nothing of it. Maybe someone just moved in or something. No other door had this basket, so I don't know why I briefly thought that, but I do have a penchant for dismissing things that aren't actively affecting my life right at that moment. Thank you for the backstory. So I just put the basket in my house and went about my day. I got home and snacked on a few of the chocolates and went about my nightly routine of watching those videos. Then I kept getting more and more snacks put on my front door almost every day. Nothing major like the basket I got on the first day, but just little chocolate bars put out on the floor. I just ate the snacks as soon as I see them. And you didn't ask, you didn't fucking wonder what these are from? You're just eating snacks from random people that... Today I woke up to someone knocking on my door. When I opened it, it was my neighbor. I've seen her a few times when we coincidentally get out of the door at the same time and we've greeted each other. She was holding another basket of snacks and asked me if I was alright from last night and if I got her other basket. Confused, I said I was alright and asked why she's giving those to me. Then she looked a bit embarrassed and admitted to hearing loud crying coming from my apartment. Yeah, someone's coming. She heard those separately. I have, I've heard loud crying and coming from your apartment? Fuck, she also asked if I saw the note in her basket. I didn't remember seeing a note, but I was too embarrassed to continue this conversation and politely thanked her before accepting her basket and closing the door. Oh my god. The note said she could hear him crying and that she went on to describe the story of her battles with depression She then said how she'd love to get to know me and is there if I wanted to talk about it Okay, she seems really cute and I do want to accept her offer of getting to know her, but I'm not depressed You like sadness so this could I'm not this could be a match made in heaven <laughs> That's so bad Oh my god, that's so bad. He's like, listen, I gotta I gotta admit something. I'm actually not depressed. I just love people who are. And you are depressed, right? You battle with it all the time? You do? Oh, that is so hot. Oh my god. I'm sorry if this is too forward, but can I jack off to your sadness? Please? Where are you going? No! Wait, does that mean no more snacks? Do not, under any circumstances, tell her the truth. It will mortify her more than you could ever understand. Yes, don't ever, ever, ever say that to her. Oh, wow. I have a trading kink. This is so embarrassing, but I literally have a fucking kink for trading, like straight up medieval bartering type shit. <laughs> <laughs> like the thought of a pound of silk for a bucket of milk just turns me on for some reason that God himself refuses to reveal to me. I can't even play Minecraft without getting hard as fucking... <laughs> Listen guys, for the sake of this video, we're just going to assume that these are 100% real, okay? I can't even play Minecraft without getting hard as a fucking battering ram whilst trading emeralds for enchanting books and shit. I have this distinct memory of watching this movie when I was like 13 or 14 and it took place in like medieval Europe or something and this guy was haggling for like a hand sculpted pot or some shit and I had to leave the room to fucking masturbate. I felt so weird after. <laughs> Okay, this is weirder than the traffic one, I think. I think that's where it started. I wish I had a normal kink, like, I don't know, piss or something. That's that's not really a normal kink, is it? I don't know how I'm going to explain to my future partner that I want to roleplay as a 14th century merchant. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, holy fuck. What will I trade me for, good wench? Is that medieval? Didn't really do a good job there, did I? Please, what quality of quilts hath you brought me today, good lady? That sucked too. <laughs> this guy was haggling for a hand sculpted pot. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> 
five shillings. Ah, oh, you drive a hard bargain, sir. Oh, fucking god damn it, that's so hot. Did you just say hard bargain? Oh, I got a fucking hard bargain right now. Oh my god. I gotta go haggle my dick off right now. I gotta go negotiate with a Kleenex right now. <laughs> I mean, fucking like Renaissance fairs. That's gonna be your shit. Actually, no. Stay away. Stay away from Renaissance fairs. That's not gonna be your shit. I, that would actually probably be an issue. Just walking around hard as fuck. So it's, it's, it's my. Uh, it's a f sword. I'm a blacksmith. I have a kink for being taught things, not even sexual things. Also, like business meetings and situations. Once again, completely non-sexual. The idea of a business meeting makes me wet, and I, li I have literally no fucking clue why. Oh my god. That is fucking awesome, but must have been horrendous in school. I mean, it was every day just a complete fucking sexual hell. You must have been so frustrated just sitting there in fucking algebra, just like, oh, fuck, fucking god damn it. Oh, teach me how to find X. How do you find X? How do you find X? Because I'm about to find, oh! That was a great one. That was a fucking great one. He's like about to climax. He's like, what are you, what are you willing to trade for this? <laughs> I'm about to bust. She's like, oh yeah. Do it, do it. And he's like, well, what are you willing to trade for it? Well, I mean, I could stroke your dick a few more times. Hmm, that's it? I'm not sure if that'll do. Okay, well, I mean, I don't really know what else to, like a bag of wheat or something. A bag of wheat? Oh, <laughs> milady, that'll do just fine. Here comes the cum. A bag of wheat for some ropes of cum. Seems like a fair trade to me. Straight male, regularly wear <laughs> God damn it, I love this subreddit. Straight male regularly wear period pads now after hospital visit. I had an operation a few months back in the nether regions for a mountain bike accident. I was sent home from hospital with a huge pad in my underwear to help with post-op swelling and bleeding. Man, it felt like my nuts were in a cloud hammock. So soft, breathable, and warm. Now I buy period pads from the supermarket so I can get the same feeling again. Really hard to keep it for my wife though, so can only wear them during work hours. It feels so wrong, but feels so good at the same time. Probably the only one who does this, but I don't care. The thicker the better. I will look to see how this evolves over the next few weeks slash months, and if it becomes a permanent slash long-term thing, I'll open up to my wife about it. Firstly, because I don't really want to keep anything from her, and secondly, because I don't like the environmental impact, and will look to more sustainable options. Yeah, fucking knit yourself a period pad. If she finds out before, then I'll tell her. She has no reason to not trust me. We've had no infidelity issues over 15 years. Just sounds like you need fucking thicker underwear, dude. You know what I mean? This sounds like a business. Like, this could potentially be something that other guys would want. They just don't even know they want it yet. We all read this and we're like, what, period pads? Those are for girls. But none of us have tried it. Who knows, it might be fucking heavenly, you know? People fucking have shoulder pads and shit to make their shoulders more square. What about a sack pad? First of all, makes your balls look sick. Second of all, comfortable as hell. I think you're onto something, dude. I don't think this is weird. Why don't you just fucking wear bike shorts? This exists! It's called bike shorts. I'm like, I have never tried something like that. I fucking lived in these things last year. Dude, that's the solution, man. Just put a, put a fucking pair of bike shorts under your under your chinos. There you go. Or build one in, sew, sew one into your pants. And then they'd be pads, pads, pads. Pass me my pads. I stole 60,000 from a game show by inserting a pager in my butt. I was facing financial stress and needed to pay back loans. 60,000 would've and has solved all of my issues. My life has been a blessing since. I appeared on a game show similar to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and would read the questions. My friend who was sitting in the far corner would page the pager on the correct answer. I could obviously feel the vibration, hence why I won $60,000. I would not have made it past the third question otherwise. I haven't had to cheat since, nor have I had the opportunity to do so, nor would I do so again listen you did what you had to do all right i'm not gonna knock the hustle cheating is bad and in 99 percent of scenarios if you cheat you're only cheating yourself remember that however you need to get out of debt it's a fucking game show made by some big ass production company did you technically steal sixty thousand dollars no because they still got they still got an episode out of it where you won so they probably made more money on the episode because of that did you break the rules yeah, but this is, to me, this is like resourceful and like the most ethical way to, to steal probably. All I can think about is this dude sitting there on the game show and the host is like, all right, and for $50,000, what is the capital of fucking Egypt? He's just sitting there he's like, mm, 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 mm. 
Cairo? He's just sweating. Just completely pale. Is it Cairo? It's like starts malfunctioning. Just fucking. Oh, oh. <laughs> just starts coming. Sorry. I put milk in my ex's mattress. I got revenge on my ex. They were one of the worst, completely unaware of how they acted, constant lying and cheating. They had the opportunity to end the relationship multiple times after I had already forgiven them for what they did. I had asked in a healthy to split up and do things that, oh, what the f people, people like read your fucking sentences and do things the right way. They instead would do anything but try to fix things in a proper way, but still be selfish enough to stay. As time went on, I would slightly lash out and they would use that as leverage against me, tell family and friends I was crazy. And what's even more toxic is staying in a relationship for the wrong reasons and, and continuous lying and expecting someone to not break. I finally got so tired of the cheating to the point where I found out for a last time and immediately just broke inside. So before I left, I got a turkey injector that you use for Thanksgiving, put milk in it and injected it into a bunch of places in their mattress. It takes a little while for it to start smelling bad and you kind of just never know where the smell is coming from. Like you, you have experience doing this, you've done it before, clearly. And you eventually get used to it, but everyone else around you can still smell it. Eventually your sweat will also start smelling sour. I regretted it slightly. I will not partake in any revenge like that ever again. Sure. Sure. But life goes on. This sounds like you are crazy. I mean, cheating is bad. Obviously, if the person's cheating, that's horrible. Right, but then just dump them. The trick is to find some gaps behind the kitchen unit, such as beneath the sink where the wastewater pipe goes out, and stuff them full of fish and bits of raw chicken. After a few days, the smell will be unbearable for months, and he won't have a clue where it's coming from. If he does find it, he'll have to rip out half his kitchen to fix the stank. I mean, this shit is insane. Just, just fucking leave and live a better life. That is the best revenge you can possibly do. This shit just fucks the future person that's gonna live in that house, fucks the guy who has to come fucking rip the kitchen out and discover the rotten fish back there. The best revenge story I remember was a woman who had a cheating husband and in the divorce he got the home that she loved. It had ornate window coverings and draperies that they had paid a lot of money for and she knew he would want to keep them so before she moved out she opened the hem of the curtains and stuffed them full of raw baby shrimp then sewed the hem back. <laughs> he moved into the home with his new wife and couldn't find the source of the odor. He eventually put the house on the market way below value due to the terrible smell. She ended up buying the house and when he and his new wife moved out they took the curtains with them. Oh my god, they took the curtains with them? Okay, that's pretty fucking good. That's pretty good. I'm telling you guys though, the best revenge, just go live a good life. Just be happy. That's the best revenge. Because to a certain point, I really think that, listen, the person that did the cheating is in the wrong 100%, right? But if you're scheming on how to get back to them and then you're executing this plan and then you're thinking about it all the time and then you're writing it on reddit that person is still in your mind which means that person is still winning if they just stop existing to you then you win that's the best revenge my mom found the masturbation closet what do you mean the masturbation closet that's not a nor that's not a thing it's so over for me and i'll never recover from this shame i legitimately want to stop living so i'm 22 and live at home i use my closet to jerk off in and have since i was a kid i legitimately stand in there and finish in the corner of the carpet then slide the dress her back over the corner. There's literally almost a decade of cum built up there. God damn. When you get close, the smell is absolutely foul, but sometimes I'll spray for breeze on it to hide the smell. This makes me want to puke. Yesterday, my mother surprised me with a new dresser for Christmas instead of the old Value Village one that's been there since I was born. We put the new one together and said she'll help me move the old one. Panic set in and I told her, it's okay, I'll swap them out myself. But she walked over and slid it back before I could stop her. I hadn't sprayed Febreze in it too long, so it's definitely rain. She screamed, oh my God, what is this? Then she realized what it was and yelled at me. Told me I'm a disgusting pervert and an animal and need to clean it up immediately. My dad overheard her shouting, so he came to see what was going on. He didn't say a word, he just put his face in his hand and dry heaved when he saw the closet and left the room. Oh my god. I don't even know what to say about this. I got the carpet shampooer she owns and ran it, but the cum is so ingrained in the carpet and actually soaked through over the years that there's just a huge obvious stain there now. My parents didn't talk to me for the rest of Christmas day and they left for Christmas dinner at my grandmother's without me. Eventually they came back. My mom wants me to see a counselor now. My dad still can't look at me and hasn't talked to me. This is the worst Christmas ever. Why wouldn't you just fucking clean it up? It takes five seconds. Why would you come on the fucking carpet? Come 
anywhere else. Oh, fuck, man. This makes me want to puke so bad. I'm with your parents. You need help. While masturbating is normal, purposely relieving yourself on the floor and simply just leaving it there isn't. So much so that it smells and has built up stains over the years is some sick shit. Get help. I mean, this is basically the equivalent of just shitting or pissing in the, in the corner. <laughs> leaving it there. It is funny that this guy said relieving yourself. That phrase is normally reserved for peeing. I gotta go take a cum real fast. No, I gotta, when you gotta go, you gotta go, right? I gotta go take a cum. I gotta go take a fat cum real fast. Gotta go relieve myself. Yeah, this is, this is horrendous. Just fucking horrendous. Definitely the worst one. It's also funny that he posted on Reddit, like, I'm sure he kind of expected people being like, oh, it's all good, man, we all do it. And everyone's like, dude, you, this is fucking disgusting. This is sick, you need help. I run to piss off an influencer. A few months ago, I started training for a half marathon. During the first few weeks, I kept on noticing this woman every few days who wore way more makeup than anyone running likely would and with a selfie stick talking into her phone as she ran. <laughs> who would do that? Who would vlog themselves running? Fucking weirdo. It didn't take me long to figure out she was doing some sort of running influencer thing. <laughs> Fuck, that sounds stupid as fuck. Who would do that shit, right? <laughs> That person's fucking weird. One morning I was behind her for a while until she stopped and yelled at me, get out of my shot! I ran past her and kind of laughed. Now every morning when I run, I actively look for her on my route so I can get behind her and screw up her shot. <laughs> Sometimes if she's well ahead of me, it means I really need to push my pace, but as soon as I get there and start mugging for the camera, all that effort is worth it. Half marathon was a few weeks ago. I'm still running like I'm training in large part because of her. This is fucking awesome. God damn. What a wonderful post. I'm always so fucking embarrassed to film when I'm, I, you know, I was being a little cheeky about this because running influencer, I do kind of have a whole fucking channel on Instagram about running, guilty as charged. But I am very embarrassed when I vlog still. I think it's a millennial thing. I didn't grow up with phones, so I did like filming is so like ingrained in Gen Z. It's just normal to do that shit in public. For me, it's not still. So still when I'm running, I'll make sure there's nobody around and then I'll be like, all right, three miles in, it's going pretty well. Uh -uh. And it's because of this, you know? I know, it's like vlogging is never... You see someone vlogging in public, you're like, what's this person doing, you know? If she was smart, she'd just leave you in the shot. People would probably think it's funny getting her more views and you'd probably get bored and stop doing it. It's so true. If she just embraced it and was like, hey, it's the fucking guy that I see every day, that would be awesome. People take themselves too seriously. Especially fucking people that like budding influencers. Why do they do that? It's like, no, my shot has to be perfect and this run has to be perfect and I have to look perfect while I'm running. It's not real. Yeah, man, fuck influencers. Yeah, yeah, dude. Totally. <laughs> Especially running ones. <laughs> fuck those, fuck those people. Okay, that's it for today's video, guys. I'm confessioned out. That was a wonderful, wonderful video. I fucking love doing these. I love this subreddit. Thank you so much. And let me know if you want to see another one of these by liking this video for me. Thank you so much. And leave your fucking craziest confession in the comments. Maybe we'll do an edition of you. A you confession edition. Goodbye. Just starts coming. Sorry.